Windows Mobile 2003, a VGA camera, and a 30-millimeter thick body. If those kind of specs don't get your motor running, you don't remember 2005 very well. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our throwback review of the Motorola i930. The i930 remains one of the most unique smartphones of all time. Seeing Windows Mobile in a clamshell form factor was always somewhat rare, but this sucker took one of a kind to new heights. First of all, though it had a GSM radio for international roaming on board, the i930 was only built for one U.S. network technology, IDEN, the push-to-talk-centric digital network used by Nextel and practically no one else. By the time this phone was launched at the tail end of Nextel's glory days in 2005, it had been delayed so many times that diehard fans had been waiting almost two years for its release. Even though it was already somewhat dated, even by the standards of the day, the pent-up demand from that long wait, plus the prestige of a rare 900-class model number, meant Nextel's then-new owner, Sprint, sold a lot of these devices. In the hand, the i930 exemplifies everything Motorola's Falcon line of IDEN phones stood for. At 167 grams, it's substantial. At 30 millimeters thick, even without our expanded battery cover here, it's massive. And its metal and impact-resistant plastic construction means it can take a beating as well as any other Nextel phone. On the front is a 4096 color STN LCD screen with a resolution of 96 by 65, above which sits the phone's one and only camera. Its VGA resolution was outdated already at launch, as devices with 1.3 megapixel cameras, like the i870, were already starting to land on Nextel. On the left-hand side, between the 2.5mm headphone jack and the volume rocker, is the familiar PTT button for direct connect calls. And that button hasn't changed much at all in 15 years. See Pocket Now's Kia Serra Torque review to confirm that. Around back is the Nextel branding and the powerful rear-mounted speaker, and up top we've got more push-to-talk controls the speakerphone toggle, and smart key. The latter allowed a user to access the recent call list and some apps via the external display, making it possible to place phone and direct connect calls without opening the device. Next to the smart key is the i930's extendable antenna. The wideband IDEN radio technology on board would theoretically have enabled data speeds of up to 100 kilobits per second, but the i930 shipped with this feature disabled, and Sprint never enabled it. The i930 thus chugged along at a painful 20 kilobits per second on a good day. On the right-hand side is a full-size SD card slot with a maximum capacity of 2 gigs, and above it sits the IR port, Windows branding, and an awesome feature that some Nokia 6126 fans may find familiar. Integrated into the i930's status light is a quick release button for the phone's flip. In 2005, folks, this was hot business. Opening the device reveals the phone's 176 by 220 display, along with a numeric keypad customized for Windows Mobile. Flanking the D-pad are two soft keys in the upper corners, a home and back button off to the sides, and a talk and end key down left and right. The power button sat below the number keys, which were sunk a little further down than on the i930's contemporaries, probably to prevent them from scratching the screen when closed, a chronic problem with many Motorola iDen phones. The software is vintage Windows Mobile Smartphone 2003, being powered along by a 180 MHz processor backed up by 32 megs of RAM. There's a horizontal ribbon of recently used apps, a status area with time, date, and network status, recent calls, upcoming appointments, and a voicemail and message count down below. Interestingly, as the Nextel network didn't support mobile-originated SMS for the majority of its existence, MMS was used for all messages, even those without media attached. It all looks fairly archaic now, but in 2005, for IDEN users accustomed to phones whose features routinely lagged behind those on more popular networks, the added functionality of Windows Mobile made the i930 the most powerful non-BlackBerry on Nextel. Many people routinely criticized its poor battery life, its lack of Bluetooth, disabled wide-end mode, low-res camera, high price tag, and its thick build that required a holster to carry it effectively, but many more people overlooked these shortcomings to buy one. And for their money, they got an excellent voice and push-to-talk machine with smartphone features that, though they weren't fast, were at least solid. At one time in America, being a Nextel customer meant the same thing being an Apple customer used to mean. You were part of something different, something special. The i930 was unique. Besides its cameraless i920 variant, no other flip smartphones existed on Nextel. That, 
plus its artificially inflated demand from two years of delays, made the 930 the king of the special phones. And it remains perhaps the most legendary mobile phone from the golden years of Push to Talk. Hope you enjoyed our nostalgic look at the Motorola i930. Be sure and subscribe to us if you don't want to miss future videos. Check out our other throwback reviews here on YouTube and visit us at pocketnow.com. Follow us in all the usual places, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.